It's five minutes with me. Well, hey, it's five minutes with Marco and I'm Marco and I'm stoked to have you all back for, I don't know, the new season. I, I was thinking it's season two, but I think I previously took a break at some point and then called what followed that season two. So maybe this is season three. I don't know. It's the new season and uh, we're going to have some fun together. I want to talk uh, about our identity as uh, ministers today whether you're paid or volunteer is not the issue. As a lifelong youth worker, I have wrestled with framing my understanding of adolescence, both in response to research and listening to those who know much more than I do, while still being critical and not simply acquiescing to damaging and biased cultural opinions uh, of teenagers. As a result, I've re rejected the assumption held by most that the teenage years are necessarily a time of storm and stress. Stanley Hall, the historical person I'd like to punch in the throat more than anyone other than Hitler, he coined that phrase in 1904 based on his super weird worldview dominated by a now completely debunked anth anthropological theory called recapitulation, Hall concluded that young people are, by evolutionary necessity, in a season of storm and stress. In fact, he referred to this life stage as savages, and by the way, children were, to Hall, pre-human. Hall said young people are unavoidably in the grips of rebellion, moodiness, volatility, and a host of other negative descriptors. Uh, I reject that, and I hope you do also. Instead, I think of adolescence as an overlay of two realities, new cognitive capacity, or I hate to even say that's part of God's creation intentions, and cultural permission, which is providing space for working out that overlay, is providing space for working out of three interwoven tasks. Those are identity, wrestling with who am I, agency, how do my choices matter, and belonging to whom and where do I belong? And I believe that the teenage years are white hot stage of those three tasks. But those three tasks are not limited to teenagers. As an adult, I continue to periodically wrestle with those same questions. And as a person in ministry, and all that entails and implies, the working out of those tasks, as we all must do from time to time, particularly when we experience change, it gets awkward. <clears throat> because we live <clears throat> because we live very public lives. At least we should, to some extent. We're either somewhat authentic and therefore public, or we're private and limiting our relational connection and impact. It's tough to think of another profession that calls for life in a fishbowl to the same extent, maybe national level politicians. Here's what I find, both from my own experience and from watching the lives of professional youth workers in the Youth Cartel's year-long coaching program. Pastors are notoriously bad at separating who I am from what I do. On one hand, those two are somewhat inseparable. There's no denying that what I do and who I am are intertwined, informing each other and cuddling, let's say spooning even. But if who I am and what I do are one and the same, I'm in trouble. And frankly, so is whatever ministry I'm a part of. One of the points uh, I make when I teach on these three adolescent tasks is that today's teenagers use the belonging task as a lens through which they view and work out the other two tasks. In other words, to whom and where do I belong will give me insight into how my choices matter and who I am. By the way, the, it's a major shift from previous epics of youth culture when the other tasks were the lenses. As I think about my own identity as a minister, maybe I should think of that adolescent lens as not such a bad thing. Of course, belonging predates creation, and our desire to experience belonging is a reflection of being made in the image of God and has who has pre-eternally existed in relationship. And after all, if I have a healthy and honest and theologically informed understanding of my belonging to Christ and to the community of Christ— that could be pretty helpful in developing a healthy identity spooning with what I do, not the inverse twinning into one thing. Through that lens, who I am starts to take on distinct hues of I am the one who is following Christ now and through death and resurrection. And 
who I am starts to take on shades of I am one part of the body, the bride of Christ. I might have a different role, but I exist in authentic relationship with a community. Honestly, that sounds so much better, so much more life-giving than an identity merely formed by what I do. The Youth Cartel Podcast Network.